All right, another video. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. This is just my opinion on some stuff floating around on the internet for entertainment purposes only. And uh, don't do what I do. And just that's about it, man. That's my disclosure. So I should probably get that like popping up so I don't have to say it every time. So I'm going to go ahead and share a screen with you. And why? Because there's another ridiculous article out there floating around on the internet. And another awesome website, which we all know and love, Medical News Today. It's only run by scientists, just the PhD chemist out there. That's This is their website. This is where they go. This is where all the underground juicy stuff is. You can't find it anywhere else. Not on PubMed. Just kidding. Um, so, again... Another one of these articles, they pop up so frequently on my Google browser as I'm on my phone, sitting on the toilet, and this is what pops up, and I'm like, this is retarded. So, or, so, anyways, politically correct. Uh, this is stupid. And they're talking about how could a weekly dose of steroid prednisone combat obesity. So we usually get prednisone whenever we have some sort of like illness and do to try to reduce or control or manage inflammation. And now they're trying to say that, hey, maybe taking a little bit of prednisone can help you with losing weight. Now, what's interesting is that I can take anything I want to and I could lose weight, right? So, I mean, I could take, um, you know, Tylenol 3 and I can lose weight. I could take Xanax and I can lose weight. I could take, I could eat McDonald's and lose weight. It doesn't really matter. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know why they would even be like putting this out there as far as like, hey, doctor, I want to go out or I want to lose some weight. And I heard prednisone is great to lose weight. And the doctor's like, yeah, it's great. I can meet my quota for the month. So <laughs> let's see what this article has to say. And I'll point out some of the the flaws and the just kind of the main takeaways so like when you read through these first of all if it sounds ridiculous in the head title or the subtitle uh, headline it's probably ridiculous and how do, and i mean for all those who are out there using prednisone how does it make you feel um like personally do you feel really great like you want to work out on while you're taking prednisone just raise your hand no, none of you. So exactly. Uh, you don't feel great unless you have some sort of bulging disc or chronic inflammation due to, um, you know, a biomechanical disadvantage. Okay. So there are some places where prednisone, if used correctly, managed correctly with your doctor, you can find some relief and some, from that pain that is preventing you from exercising. So that's the, the correct way to use it under doctor supervision. What's not correct is for those who are healthy individuals who are causing some cardiovascular issues or lymphatic issues or digestive issues, which are sending some sort of metabolic inflammatory issue throughout your body that's causing you to feel like crap. So this is not a Band-Aid at all. This is not a diet pill at all. So let's go ahead and look into this article again. So they're, they're mainly uh, working with people who have chronic inflammation to take a, a dose um, uh, of uh, prednisone, right? So that's usually the people who are prescribed with it. It's highly effective, but can cause weight, weight gain, muscle wasting, and other serious side effects. So they're claiming that the high dose of prednisone can cause that. Well, I mean, to reduce some, to reduce inflammation, chronic inflammation, sometimes the body does have to go through a metabolic disadvantage to be able to break down, control, metabolize that inflammation, right? So, but it's only temporarily, okay? So water retention is a big deal with prednisone, okay? And that can cause other issues, whether that be now making, maybe making your, you're breathing harder due to water retention uh, around your organs, around your heart, maybe uh, blood viscosity. Uh, there's a lot of other issues that may happen due to everyone's different uh, genetic factors, okay? So 
they are now claiming that using rot, um, mice or rats, I'm pretty sure it's mice, yes, mice, mice on a high fat diet, giving a small dose of prednisone. So, I mean, we're talking like less, like less than five milligrams, right? So five milligrams, it's pretty, pretty hefty dose, right? Man, these things are just popping up. Um, <clears throat> so this is not a, a very long article, but so we're talking like five milligrams, right? Um, usually like doses will be like 20 milligrams, 50 milligrams. And you usually titrate down, right? If you're already taking prednisone, you titrate down to the little pack uh, because again, you don't want to have um, a, a chronic um, uh, fluid buildup due to the prednisone, okay? Because that cannot be good. So there's a lot of science coming out now saying that small doses or microdosing is going to have a better impact on metabolism to reach your end goal of whatever that you're using. For example, segue, um, TRT. So if someone uses testosterone replacement therapy, usually, so um, intramuscular injections are taken, you know, once every 10 days, or sometimes people like to split it up twice. Um, so like a half CC and a half CC uh, Monday and Thursday, kind of typical, but there's also information coming out saying, oh, you want to do microdosing with insulin pen, sub Q, so subcutaneous fat. So it disperses slower. So you have a more stable um, rate. But in hindsight, you got to pin every day, sub Q oil based. So testosterone is an oil base. It can leave a little lump there. And depending on where you put the shot, sub Q, the metabolism is different. So it really depends on a lot of other factors, whether that be uh, the muscle group itself, the mitochondrial density, the uh, sarcoplasmic density, the androgen density, uh, the amount of blood flow to that area, so abdomen versus shoulders, big difference in blood flow. Uh, and that's sub Q. Same thing intramuscular, okay? So there's a lot of push for microdosing. This hasn't always been the case. This is just a big hype thing now. And a lot of people are trying to do it because they're trying to do biohack. We got a lot of bio biohackers out there. I mean, you see what happened to some of these biohackers now, where are they? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> watch out for those people who say they are biohackers. I'm a biohacker. And I'm, you know, and they don't have like a uh, chemistry background or biochem background for like finance. So um, anyways, the first thing, first of all, again, if it, if a pill, if a prescription, well, okay, let me, <laughs> let me just take a step back. You don't need a prescription for fat loss. Okay. You don't. Second, if that prescription is for pain management, it's not going to help you with fat loss. Again, unless you have a chronic uh, biomechanical disadvantage or disease, then that can help you. So everyone's a little bit different. But we're talking about the people who Google this stuff that are like, I want a pill that makes me burn fat. You're just lazy. So let's just, let's keep it there. And second or third, mice on high fat diet. Okay. What we, what we know about metabolism, okay, is that you do see people who have a variety of different diets. Okay. We have our um, carb and protein people with low fat. We have our high fat and our high protein and low carb or no carb keto. We have our just our meats only and just getting the fats from the meat sources or carnivore. We got our plant based, which is going to be high fat, high carb, low protein. We got our high protein, moderate fat, moderate carb people. We got a lot of those different options out there. Okay. But so get this, right? If you are on a high fat diet, you can, your body can adapt to using fat very efficiently, but it knows that it uses fat efficiently for fuel. Okay. So what does it have to do? It has to know how to put that fat back into the fat cells because it needs to use it later on for fuel. Okay. So there's a reason why people who are natural and not using exogenous hormones to help them out on keto they will have a more inflamed look to them, okay? It's not because of inflammation. It's due to the water buildup and the fat 
build up. Okay. Your body's just storing energy. That's what it does. And so you're going to have a glaze of fluff of some sort of, some sort of fat over your muscles. Okay. So your muscles might not pop as much as someone maybe who's on a, a carb cycling diet through you high carb, moderate carb, low carb. And then you keep your pro protein, you know, around 0.7 to one gram per pound of body weight. And then your fats are going to be, tend to be in the moderate side, like a 0.5 grams of fat per pound of body weight. Okay. So those carbs, they'll be used as energy and your body will be guessing and using as much energy as it can from that stored carbohydrate in your body, whether it be from muscle or from your liver. Okay. And so it's going to continually have a fluctuation of energy sources, but it's trying to keep up with keeping enough energy in your muscle and in your liver from those carbohydrates. So your body really won't retain that much fat. So it's very minimal fat to be on your body. Fat is there for starvation purposes. It's there for adaptive purposes. It's there for hormonal purposes. So the mice that are on high fat diets. So it's, so they're saying, despite having high fat diets, we don't even know their freaking carbohydrate intake. Okay. We just don't, nor do we know their, their protein intake. They're on high fat diets and Americans like, Oh my God, they're on high fat diets. And I can, that means I can eat fat. Like I can go eat McDonald's and then I can take prednisone as microdosing every single day. And I can burn fat because those mice, despite being in a high fat diet, they're still burning fat. Again, that's what they're meant to do. There's no other source of energy for their mice to use. It has to use fat that's being stored. Is it the prednisone or is it the fact that maybe they're in a calorie deficit or their activity levels more than you? I mean, how do you convert the energy output of a my, mice, of a, of a mouse spinning on the treadmill or whatever and running around versus the energy conversion of someone who's sitting at a desk, walking maybe around the grocery store, walking to the fridge, to the couch, do very minimal steps. The conversion rate, it's, we can break it down and we can find out uh, through a, a variety of different tools and, um, and meters, but um, it, it, it's gonna give you the same answer that I'm gonna give you. And it's gonna say, High fat diet, moving around a lot. They're going to use fat. They're going to lose fat. That's just what happens. So just keep that in mind. If you want to have that diet of a high fat diet, your body's going to use fat as fuel. No problem. But it's going to restore that fat back just as fast because it's going to need some sort of fuel in the future. It's not going to want to burn protein down. It doesn't want to use that. That's like, that's like saying, Hey, I need to build a fence. So I'm going to start taking the bricks that are around my mother-in-law suite house, I'm gonna start building a brick wall rather than why don't you just go and buy some wood or PVC to build a fence, right? A brick wall is gonna be a lot harder for you to build than the PVC fence or the wooden fence, man. So that's kind of what your body's doing. It's trying to be very, very efficient. And so when you're, when you're put in that situation, it's not the prednisone, stop, stop trying to find that miracle drug. This article, again, should be banned. I don't even know why it's on here. Why do you let this stuff on here, Google? And um, anyways, for what it is, man, that's it. Medicalnewstoday.com. Don't listen to them uh, for your nutritional advice. If you like this video, like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know. Hey, man, I love prednisone. It makes me feel like I have superhuman strength. And I just take them like Tic Tacs. Prednisone's awesome. I've lost so much body weight. I use it for prep to get on stage. What do you take? Oh, I take a little bit of trim, masterone, test, and then I throw in some prednisone. <laughs> Doesn't happen, man. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to know in the space below. All right, later.